beauty is pretty subjective. For example, it'd be tough to get a group of people to agree on the most spectacular piece of art in this gallery. But could the same group of people agree on what is good, or perhaps on what is true? As Christians, we profess that there is only one truth, and to quote Augustine, all truth is God's truth. The intelligent design movement has been working hard the last few decades, attempting to create a parallel science. Just as we in the church have developed Christian music and Christian art, intelligent design has given us an evangelical version of science. Stephen Meyer of the Discovery Institute is one of the movement's leading lights. So we're seeing really similar forms of data processing, data management, data retrieval, and we know in the one case is definitely the product of intelligence, which leads you to suspect at least that these are also the result of intelligent agency. But Meyer's arguments and those of his colleagues in the intelligent design movement have not been well received by the scientific community. I think that Meyer's signature of the cell, he unfortunately doesn't understand what DNA is all about. He thinks DNA is a blueprint, which is a popular cultural misconception. But the truth of the matter is, the information in DNA is a structure, the physical structure. And it's not a pure string of characters that codes for something. What it is, is the letters in the DNA actually specify the shape of the DNA, and the shape of the DNA determines the function. It's the function that's important in DNA. And, and, and I think that Myers really misses this in his book. Put it sort of in the simplest terms, it's not the genes you have, it's how you use them. And so these genes which are involved in building bodies, you can sort of think of them like a carpenter's toolkit. That while everyone may have a hammer and a nail gun and a whole set of wrenches, all these different animals, how you use them over time determines what structure you build. Whether you build you know, a, you know, a hope chest or you know, a whole house. Right? So the genetic switches determine the use of those tools. And it's the genetic switches that are evolving that are giving us the great diversity of, for example, the, the animal kingdom. The critics of intelligent design don't just point to the scientific problems with those arguments. There are also philosophical obstacles. But really what intelligent design is doing is really critiquing one particular theory in evolution. It doesn't purport to offer a, a grand scheme of how everything puts to, is put together. What it's doing is attacking a particular uh, issue in evolutionary theory. And in that sense, it's not offering a, 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 a total explanation for things. So then what that we have to do then is ask the question, is that criticism a valid criticism? Is it valid scientifically? Is it valid theologically? And on those grounds, I'm not an intelligent design proponent. I think they're not valid for both scientific and theological reasons. But I think that if you strive too hard for scientific proofs of God, you're in danger of accidentally endorsing the scientific position of elevating science to be the supreme arbiter of what is intellectually convincing. Because you're essentially um, giving them the deciding uh, control over what is and is not to be believed. So I, so I, so I personally find more convincing, you know, many other of the arguments for God. And I think ultimately you actually can't know God uh, in an abstract way. You have to get to know Him. Although as believers we might have a preference for Christian music or even Christian art, we should all strongly object to an alternative set of scientific Christian facts. We agree with those in the intelligent design community that there is a mind who has established the processes of life and sustains the laws of the universe. We believe that, even though ID has been unsuccessful in its efforts to somehow catch God at work under a microscope. God is at work in His creation, and real science is not a threat to that sovereignty.